Hello, good morning, fabulous people. Very happy to be here today. Um, today we're going to be discussing U.S. immigration law updates, as usual, spilling the legal tea on U.S. immigration law. Welcome, guys. <coughs> if you watch this video later, a special welcome to you. If you're watching on YouTube, as you can tell, new channel. So give a thumbs up, like, subscribe, and share as well. Okay, so we're still talking about the affidavits of support. We did the background to this yesterday and today we're discussing you know the new updates with affidavits of support the i-864 there are new poverty guidelines um which um the new guidelines are effective or yeah they, they are effective from well they were effective from april 1st 2021 so it's still pretty new. So yesterday, as we stated, um, guys, drop me a comment. Let me know you're watching and where you're watching from. As we stated, the affidavit of support is, you know, when a petitioner files for somebody and then they have to um, sign a contract to the U.S. government and say that, hey, they are responsible for the financial situation of the person they are sponsoring until, you know, they are no longer responsible for them. Okay, so for anybody that tries to get a green card, um, the beneficiary, the beneficiary who's trying to get a green card needs to have somebody sponsor them or vouch for them and say that, hey, you know, you will not be a public charge to the U.S. pocket. Okay, so that's um, a little bit of background. And for the I-864, the sponsor is, um, is going to fill a form known as the i-864 okay guys so the i-864 is the form that you're going to be filling as a sponsor and the sponsor must be a u.s citizen or a green card holder of course you are contracting with the u.s government so you have to um be older than 18 years old okay because of course you you need to be of contractual age before you can contract and to do that you need to be above 18 years old guys i'll read comments very soon let me just um, let's keep going a little bit more. Okay, well, the sponsor can also be a conditional resident, meaning the sponsor um, himself or herself has just a two-year green card. And then as we stated yesterday, the I-864 does not apply to certain cases. We stated some of the exceptions, such as employment-based cases, and then the diversity immigrants as a green card, um, the, the lottery, the lottery winners. And then, you know, self-petitioning people like widows, widowers, and then refugees, asylees, people applying with, you know, for asylum. And, you know, people applying under VAW as well, you know, so these are some of the exceptions. All right, so guys, the, um, the I-864 is a form that the sponsor would need to file, you know, um, in order to prove that the beneficiary will not be a public charge. A public, if you're a public charge as a green card, I mean, if you're applying to get a green card and you are deemed to be a public charge, you are you will be found inadmissible. And public charge means that you are, you know, collecting some um, means tested public benefits like food stamps or Medicaid or something of the sort. Okay, so let's talk about um, the I-864A. Before we talk about the guidelines, the I-864A is for people who, um, so if if the sponsor does not meet the guidelines, the income guidelines, the sponsor will need somebody known as a co-sponsor. And the co-sponsor, if the co-sponsor is in the same house as the sponsor, then the co-sponsor will need to file the I-864A which means that he's um, contracting to be a joint sponsor and contracting with the main sponsor to sponsor the beneficiary or of the of the green card application. Okay, so um, pretty much the 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 household the I eight six four A the person who is the co sponsor is a, is known as a household wage earner and they must demonstrate by themselves that 
their income meets at least, of course, one twenty five percent above the you know poverty guideline. So we're going to be talking more about the poverty guideline. You know the amount you should be earning depending on your household size. So we'll define all those things, and um, yeah, that'll be it. So um, let's see. We can talk about joint sponsorship, but I think that we can just jump straight into how to calculate the income guidelines. So first of all, you need to know what your income is, and then you need to know what your household size is. So the household size would usually include the sponsor number one, the sponsor's spouse, and then the sponsor's children, okay? So, um, for example, if I'm filing for, let's say I'm a US citizen, I'm filing for my mother to come to the US to be a green card holder. Well, let's say my mom is here. She's right here. Let's, let's use the adjustment of status. She's here and I'm filing for her. I, my household size would be me as a sponsor, my husband, and then my, my two children. Those, so my household size would be four, okay? So that's how to check the number of people who are in your household. And usually you would need to include your tax returns and your W-2 with this. And on the tax returns, the people you've claimed as dependents would normally make up your household size. Okay, so now let me share my screen with you and show you the new income guideline, and then you guys can understand a bit more. So we'll go into the um, the the weeds here. Okay, so for the forty eight contiguous states, um, the DC, Puerto Rico, U.S. Virgin Islands, Guam, Commonwealth. So the forty, so all these people, well, the forty eight states plus the U.S. territories. These are the guidelines for them. So note that the I-864 or the affidavits of support, um, the amount of money you need to be making in order to sponsor somebody to get a green card depends on where you live, number one. So it depends on where you live. And then, of course, it depends on your household size, and then it depends on your income level. So these are some of the factors and the variables. When we talk about the 48 contiguous states, it just means that uh, these 48 states within the within the U.S. they touch one another. They are together. There's no um, country or body of water that is coming between the states. The states are connected. Alaska and Hawaii are not contiguous states. They, you know, they do not border any U.S. states. They are, if you look on the U.S. map, they are very separate. And they are separated by a body of water. The rest of the 48 states are together. So those are the contiguous states. So if you are living in any of the 48 contiguous states as well as these um, US territories, this is going to be your income guideline. We'll just talk about maybe about three of them. And then I will, of course, I have put the link to the, this is known as the guideline, it's known as the I-864P. So you can check for yourself and then see if you know if you are filing for family or whoever whether you need a co-sponsor or a joint sponsor or whatever. So if your household size is two, you need to be making above twenty one thousand seven seven five dollars a year. Remember that when it comes to sponsors who are on active duty in the U.S. Armed Forces their um, poverty guideline level is lower. So if you are in the military and you're sponsoring a family member for a green card holder, you know, your income is less, you know, can be lower and then you can still act as a sponsor of somebody, you know, come, you know, be getting a green card. So we will not talk about the people in active duty. We'll just talk about the other people, all other sponsors. So if you have a household size of three, then your income to be a sponsor of somebody who wants to get a green card, <coughs> I'm sorry, excuse me, you need to be making above $27,000 for 50, okay? Guys, we're still spilling the US immigration law tea, spilling all the legal tea. If your household size is four, then you need to be making $33,125 a year. 
you know, five thirty eight thousand eight hundred dollars a year. So the whole point of this is, as I told you yesterday, you to be admissible in the U.S. as a green card holder, you need to you you need not to be a public charge. A public charge means that somebody who's going to be a drain on the pockets of the U.S. or the taxpayers' pocket. So you're going to come into the U.S. and then be be requesting for public benefits like Medicaid. If you go and give birth, you want the state or the government to sponsor and pay for everything. They don't want that. And so if you're saying that you are filing an application to become a green card, you need somebody who's above 18 years old who is a green card holder themselves or a U.S. citizen who will contract with the U.S. government and say, hey, I'm responsible for this person seeking to be a green card holder financially. If there's any public public tested, you know, means tested public benefits that they apply for and are given, I will be on the hook for it. I will pay for it. So this is my income. I can afford it. I have people I'm taking care of, but I can add this person to my burden, you know, and then take care of them. So that's it in very, you know, very simple terms and very simple language. So, guys, I think that um, that's it. Pretty much this new income guideline was, you know, it's effective 1st April 2021. So it's still spanking new. Um, usually when you are filing the I-86, where you need to attach your, you know, your W-2, your tax returns as well. If you need help with this, I understand that it can be a little technical. So just call my office, one, you know, 802-7800-564, and then I can help you with it all right guys you you honestly don't need to understand all of this all of these jargons this is my job and i'm supposed to understand it and i do so just call me and get that burden off your shoulder but in in, in simple terms this is you know this is the new income guideline so just check the link if you need help and then make sure you're filing properly because if you are unable to 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 prove this you, you you risk getting a denial or a rejection because that means that your person is inadmissible okay all right guys thank you so much for joining tomorrow we'll, i'll come again and then we can go into a few more details i might i'll probably talk about talk some more about the joint sponsor and then the i864a and probably the i864ez and then when to file some of these variations of the affidavit of support all right um Jay, jenna davis says hi lawyer jenna tuning in from maryland jenna how are you doing how's maryland maryland is i mean virginia is so cold this morning machua papipi edupofo is watching from seattle washington state great to have you here machua papipi <laughs> happy you guys could join us i hope you guys benefited from this video please be safe and stay safe and spread love and be good. Take care of yourselves. All right, guys. Bye-bye until I see you again tomorrow. Bye.